Welcome to lesson number 50. In lesson number 49, 58, and 47, we were looking at the other types of plants in their habitats, that is the xerophytes, hydrophytes, and mesophytes. But now we are going to look at the halophytes. Halo means salt. Then the halophytes are the plants that grow in a salty environment. The biggest challenge that they are facing is uh, lack of enough water in their tissues because there is too much salt in the external environment. That increases the osmotic uh, pressure in the external environment. Hence, this can even cause water to be absorbed from the plant tissues into the out outside environment, that is the outside solution, so as to make the plant dry off. For them to avoid being dried off by the process of osmosis, they must be having some adaptations which enable them to even retain the small amount of water that they have and also the adaptation that they are having should also enable them to uh, survive in this salty environment without being dehydrated. The kind of problem that they are facing may even end up making them to lack water in their tissues, yet they are growing in water, only because there is too much salt in this external uh, in water in the external environment, and this can even make them to uh, uh, go through what we call physiological drought. This is whereby there is no water in the tissues to enable them to perform the physiological processes in them that may require water. Such physiological processes may include uh, uh, the water that is required to dissolve the food substrate that is in the seed for the process of germination to take place among others. Characteristic of these in uh, lophitic environments may include high salt concentration, just as I've mentioned. There is low concentration of dissolved uh, gases, that is oxygen and carbon peroxide, and there is also a low light intensity, most especially for those that live in a uh, marine ecosystem. Let us look at the adaptations of the halophytes to their environment. One, they have root cells which are highly concentrated to enable them to absorb water in the process of osmosis. Number two, some have salt glands to enable them to excrete what, uh, salts directly into the environment. They have salt glands and therefore during the process by which water is being absorbed, remember there is too much uh, salt in, the, in that water. They may be absorbing water together with some salt in them, which is dissolved in you know, which is dissolved in them. This salt will be channeled to the salt gland in either the stem or the, some parts of the leaves. And once these salts have been accumulated in this salt gland, the salt gland moves close to the sol uh, surface of the leaf or the stem. Then it uh, it bursts and let the salt out of the plant. Number three some that grow in mud flats that is areas which are swampy in mud flats may have a uh, buttress roots for anchorage these buttress roots will enable them hold on to the ground since the mud flats are always uh, are not uh, capable of providing uh, enough support to the plant roots most uh, most of these plants which grow in water, that, that is the submergent type, may be growing close to the surface of the water to enable them to absorb light for photosynthesis. That is number four. Number five, some produce fruits which, uh, uh, which have the arenchyma tissues for buoyancy. That, that is, those are the categories that grow inside the water. That is, that is the marine ecosystem. Number six, some seeds are capable of germinating while still attached to the mother plant 
to increase their chances for survival. Why is this happening? Remember, this plant, since it is growing on a salty environment, and in a salty environment, uh, there is uh, less oxygen supply, and for a seed to germinate, it requires oxygen, water, and warmth. That is the ambient temperature. Since there is no oxygen in this kind of environment, this, uh, if the seed falls onto such a uh, ground or maybe in such an aquatic habitat, the chances for germination are actually reduced and therefore it may require to germinate while still on the mother plant so that it comes on as a young seedling, not as a seed anymore, and that increases its survival chance. Number seven, which is the last one, some have pneumatophores. Pneumatophores refers to the breathing roots. They have pneumatophores to enable them obtain oxygen from the atmosphere. I think you can be able to see this diagram of mine. There is a diagram here. The pneumatophores are these ones here. This is a, an example. This is a plant, and it has got its roots, which have been taken to various parts outside the water. This is the water level. And this is a plant then it has various roots which have originated and uh, it has been exposed to outside part of the uh, water to enable it absorb uh, oxygen from the atmosphere that is the end of this uh, lesson number 50 adaptations of halophytes to the environment thank you for watching the video we'll meet in our next uh, lesson that is the 51st lesson. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe to this channel for more lessons.